So how is SpaceX Starlink going to improve speeds and latency? I'm glad you asked. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of fireside. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX Starlink and what they are doing to improve speeds and latency. Everyone wants faster speeds and lower latency. Well, I was reading an article over on Extreme Tech and I wanna share some of this with you guys because it is important. I've talked to you guys about this in the past, but this is a article that kind of sums it up a little bit. I'm gonna go through that with you, give you my commentary at the end. I wanna hear from you down below in the comments. I wanna know your thoughts. Are your speeds increasing? Your upload speed, your download speed? How about your latency? Is your latency going down? Do you wanna see lower latency? Well, according to Ookla over there, PC Magazine, they did an article about a month or so ago and they showed how latency is actually getting better and speeds are also increasing. And I wanna go through some of that with you and tell you why this is so important. Some people, they don't get what the difference between latency and ping and speeds of upload and download, how does it all correlate and what is actually more important? Elon Musk talked about this recently in one of his lives when he was gaming. He was doing a Diablo 4 stream and he talked about it. Anyways, he is a gamer, if you don't know. Yep, this is Starlink. So, we've gotten the median latency of Starlink down to around 30 milliseconds in the US. So, you should be able to play most real time games. It's about equal to cable. And I think long term, well, long term, like in the next, I don't know, year or two, we should be able to get the. Uh, Starlink latency below 20 milliseconds. Before we get into this article, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out. They're free. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so. If you have, thank you. I appreciate it. Click this little notification button over here and then click all. So when I go live, when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. If you want to say thank you, for all of my hard work, there'll be a thank you button right down here. You can click on that, give a dollar or two if you would like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you're looking for more Starlink content, which I know you are, I put together almost 300 videos now specifically on SpaceX Starlink. How to's, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, and the why behind all of it. So check those out. I'll put a link right here. Don't click on it yet. Click on this link when you're done watching this video and you'll see a ton of good information. Anyways, now that the housekeeping is done, let's jump right into this article. It starts out by saying, SpaceX currently operates more than 6,000 Starlink satellites in orbit of Earth. And that number could balloon if Elon Musk gets his way. The SpaceX CEO recently revealed plans to deploy the next generation of Starlink satellites at a much lower altitude to reduce latency on the network and make satellite internet perform more like terrestrial broadband. So terrestrial broadband is basically what they're trying to get, latency under 20 milliseconds. So yes, they're bringing these satellites lower or closer to Earth. So they're going to be attached to the balloons that are keeping them up there at a lower altitude. <laughs> I can't tell you how many people say that we never launch rockets and there's no satellites in space and they're actually being held up there by balloons. Anyways, that's for a whole nother video. A robust earthbound internet connection should have latency less than 20 milliseconds, which makes connection functionally real time. Latency is more important Latency is more important than overall speed for applications like video chat and online games, both of which work poorly on Starlink in its current state. Now, I kind of differ with that a little bit because I have played games with Starlink and I've also done live broadcasts and you can see that we're actually able to do it now. So. This is kind of true and not true. There is certain areas where the latency gets high and certain areas where speeds are low and then they have these problems. But here in South Florida, I haven't been experiencing those problems for over a year. Just to give you some real world information. Based on me, 
using it for 36 months. The article continues. Musk said that SpaceX will tackle latency with its next satellite redesign. It's version threes, basically, which will orbit at 350 kilometers instead of 550 kilometers. Big difference, 200 kilometers closer to Earth. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the positives and negatives to that before the end of this video. So hang in there. SpaceX recently announced that it had reached a median latency of 28 milliseconds, an impressive number that matches the average cellular connection. However, SpaceX Starlink's connectivity is still less consistent than other forms of internet access. And that is the truth. That is one of the things that is a problem with SpaceX Starlink. It isn't consistent. All right, because it is satellites and the satellites are coming by at 17,000 miles per hour and handshaking between each one as they're coming overhead. It is not an easy task to perform, obviously. So the latency is like kind of up and down. Your speeds are a little bit up and down. I would like to see a even or an even keel, right? A medium that doesn't fluctuate that much. Also, you can look at it as jitter. I would like to see jitter come down. I did a whole video about jitter. Anyways. The article continues, users in many regions report latency spikes that make real-time interaction challenging. Agreed. Not now, but it was the case a year ago. Adding new Starlink satellites at a lower altitude could help with that, as well as the company's plans for cellular service. Absolutely the case. In an October filing with the International Telecommunication Union, or the ITU, SpaceX stated its intention to add almost 30,000 new satellites, 19,440 of which would orbit between 340 and 360 kilometers, 350, let's call it. It has also asked the U.S. Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, for permission to operate Starlink satellites in that altitude range, but the agency has some concerns. The FCC has asked for more details on how SpaceX will ensure the new satellites will not interfere with space stations, which are expected to proliferate with the expansion of private aerospace firms like SpaceX. The FCC also wants data showing low Starlink satellite orbits won't cause radio interference with other satellites. No doubt, astronomers will also have something to say about the presence of thousands of new satellites in low Earth orbit. SpaceX is currently deploying version two mini satellites as it waits for the Starship rocket to be ready for flight. It no longer blows up. And in the last flight, it didn't blow up. So we're getting there, we're getting there. Possibly IFT5 is the magic number. At that point, SpaceX will be deploying its larger version three satellites that will probably include these lower orbits in some capacity. The FCC gave SpaceX until July 8th, July 8th, to respond to its questions, but it seems unlike SpaceX will get licenses for 20,000 more new satellites the last time the FCC capped SpaceX at 7,500. So we're not sure exactly what they're going to get or how many they're going to be allowed. It's really going to depend on what I would say SpaceX, Starlink, gives them when it comes to information. Will there be any interference? And if there isn't, maybe those numbers could be as high as 20,000 more satellites. We will have to see going forward. Now, I brought up this latency chart, and this is from last year to now, and we can see that latency has been reduced. The mean latency used to be from 40 to 60 milliseconds. Now, on average, we're seeing 20 to 40 milliseconds, and I can attest to that. Now, let me bring up a speed test I just did this morning. We can see here that my latency is in the 20s, 24 milliseconds, 25 milliseconds. That's what I've been getting on average lately. Also, the speeds have increased. So the download speeds are now over 200 megabits on average, and the upload speeds are over 20 megabits on average, whereas last year, the download speeds were right around 100 to 130 megabits per second, and the upload was about 10 to 15 megabits. So we're increasing when it comes to speeds, and we're decreasing when it comes to latency. And that decrease in latency has been a major, major help. 
I want to break in really quick because my future self editing this video was doing a speed test. I want to show this to you. 327.25 megabits down and 31.71 megabits up. And we have a latency of 28 milliseconds. So I want to bring that to your attention because the speeds have been actually getting faster and I want to show you real time that they actually are. I hope you guys are also experiencing the same. Back to the video. Once again, lower latency brings us on par with broadband. And we know that the latency that is currently seen through cell is anywhere from 30 to 40 milliseconds on average. And we are now getting for myself in the 20s. So we're actually faster than what we get on cellular connection. The problem that I always have when it comes to SpaceX Starlink is consistency. And this is something that I've talked to you guys about in the past. I would rather see, let's say, 40 milliseconds ping that stays 40. 38, 42. So the jitter, right? The jitter is that average or that mean between the fastest and the slowest, right? So the jitter is only one millisecond or two milliseconds. Whereas with SpaceX Starlink, some people are getting jitter that are like five and eight, sometimes 20 milliseconds of jitter where it is kind of up and down. That really affects real time. So if you're playing a game or if you're doing a live stream or if you're doing some type of conference call, that's when you end up with issues. But once again, bear in mind, we're getting into that 20 range. And Elon Musk, during this gaming session, his live gaming session, he said, listen, we are working on this. I know it is very important. It's an imperative to get below 20 milliseconds. And that's what his goal is. The question is, is it possible? And the answer to that is absolutely. The reason being is number one, the satellite communication that happens between your dish, or I call him Mr. Bevel, and the satellite and back, that round trip information from your dish to the satellite and back takes roughly about four to six milliseconds, four to six milliseconds. So all of the rest, when we're getting those milliseconds range, like this last one that I just did with 24, 25 milliseconds, that addition, right, that extra 20 milliseconds is all happening terrestrially. That is all happening on the ground because the information going up and down is quick. So that means it's the information slowdown that's happening from you to the ground station, from the ground station to the pop, from the pop out to the network, then from the network back to the pop, to the ground station, back to the satellite, and then back to Mr. Bevel. That's how it works. So that's where that latency is happening. So by number one, reducing the latency, the time that it takes data from getting from you to the satellite and back, by bringing those satellites down is going to help a lot. Maybe let's say 25% help, let's call it 200 kilometers closer to earth, which is awesome. They're also going to have to do some stuff in their network operation centers and their NOCs or their POPs, as well as the ground stations to facilitate faster transmission of the data. But what I speculated last year, and I think that will happen, is they're going to reduce the number of ground stations that we see all over the place. They will have the ground stations literally located at the POPs. This means that's going to cut down that traversing on the ground or terrestrial traversing from a ground station near you all the way to a pop, maybe 700 miles away. Like for me, my ground station is close to me, but my pop is in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm in South Florida. That's 700 miles. That is a big deal, a big deal to send that data. So by having the pop sitting in Atlanta, Georgia, that will really speed things up. Now, the question that people ask, well, how are they going to do that? Don't you need a ground station near you? Well, yes and no. As more and more of these satellites have interconnection between each other through laser communication, basically laser speed, the speed of light in a vacuum is extremely quick, right? What they can do is take data that I'm sending up to a satellite near me in South Florida and then relay the data from South Florida to Georgia with a single beam of light. How fast is that, right? Milliseconds very, very few milliseconds at that, and then beam it down to their pop or a ground station that is right next to the pop. So that is going to save a ton, a ton of time. So I can see probably anywhere between 12 and 15 milliseconds latency with SpaceX Starlink. 
And that's including the headroom that is necessary in the NOx or the network operation centers and these fiber channels, these racks that they have for switching. So there is going to be some latency. You can't get rid of all of it, but it's going to be really, really close to broadband, really, really close to fiber. I mean, some people with fiber are getting latency of 10, 15, 20 milliseconds. They're not getting zero milliseconds or four milliseconds like the people that are very close to their network operations center, all right? So I see this happening, but, and this is the big but here, they need to be able to do it with consistency, meaning they need to figure out those handshakes and as the things are going by, there isn't that like little stumble for a millisecond, two milliseconds or any of that. It needs to be just absolutely flawless. And that I think will happen a lot easier when there's more and more satellites overhead. So instead of having to wait for a satellite to come by, because let's say you have three overhead at any given time, eventually you might have 10 overhead. And now that time between them or the distance between those satellites are going to be reduced greatly because there's going to be a lot more overhead. So I think that's going to also add into the mix here. All in all, to kind of break things down, the bottom line here is in the last year, speeds have just about doubled, number one. And number two, latency has also doubled reduced by two, let's say 2x. So this is really, really big and it's only getting better. And as I can see with my latency, when I'm getting 20 milliseconds sometimes, 21 milliseconds, that's just amazing. We're really getting to that sub 20 milliseconds that he's talking about. Now that's specifically me. Your miles may vary. So you might be still getting 40, 50, 60 milliseconds, but it might actually be better than the way it was a year ago you should check it. I check mine all the time using the ukulaspeedtest.net website, and I think you should do the same. Jot down what those numbers are every day or once a week or whatever, and then you can get an idea of how things are going in your area. Anyways, I hope you found this video interesting or maybe entertaining. If you did, throw it a thumbs up, that'd be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools and all of my merch and shirts and cups and tees and everything else that I produce. Pick something up and support me and my family. I would truly appreciate it. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.